Welcome to Daily Faith. Boy, am I so glad to see you today. I hope God is living big inside you because great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. You need to stay right where you are to watch this program because we have a guest that I think is going to really challenge us. Um, he sent me a book, a booklet. I mean, it, it's taken me 30 minutes to, to go through this booklet. And my eyes have been opened and my jaw hit the floor a couple of times because I had no idea. I am as anti-abortion as you could ever imagine. And I didn't understand how cunning they were to sell this bill of goods to the American public. And um, so we are, just, we are just so excited to have um, our, our guest today. And you'll be meeting him in a, in a few moments. L yesterday, I saw something that really blessed me. Um, uh, Vice President Pence was speaking in a, in a crowd. If you recall, when they were confirming, um, hopefully soon to be Justice Barrett, to be a judge, they really gave her a horrendous time. I mean, they're just, they're abusive. They take their power literally and they think they're, they think they're all little Caesars. <laughs> little Caesars, yeah, that's, how we, that's pretty good. They're like little Caesars, a slice of pizza. Anyway, moving aside from that, um, uh, accidental uh, slip, they, they really abused this woman. And one of the things they talked about her was her dogma, her faith. And by using the word dogma, that's a derogatory term, trying to tear her down. And Vice, uh, Vice President Pence was speaking yesterday to a crowd and he spoke. And I want you to listen to what he said. I gotta tell you, I'm a big fan of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. And not just because she's from Indiana because she is truly a remarkable person. And uh, she deserves a dignified hearing, a dignified and respectful hearing in the United States Senate. But men and women, we have reason to be concerned. You all remember when she was concerned to the Court of Appeals just two short years ago, the Democrat chairman of the Judiciary Committee criticized her Catholic faith Senator Dianne Feinstein said, quote, the dogma lives loudly within you. And Hollywood elites have already begun to criticize Judge Barrett and her family for their faith. Well, I got news for the Democrats and their friends in Hollywood. That dogma lives loudly in me. That dogma lives loudly in you. And the right to live, to work, to worship according to the dictates of our faith lives loudly in the Constitution of the United States of America. And these attacks on Judge Amy Coney Barrett's faith must stop. <laughs> I was out of my seat. My wife thought I'd had a, a electric shock. I'd both my hands up in the air and I'm saying, yes! Because we need to understand that the dogma to me, this is like the deplorables. If they want to call my dogma my faith, go right ahead. But my dogma lives big inside of me. And my guest today, and I'm Scottish, and, and um, he's Hispanic background, and I, I, I don't, I'm scared to, to pronounce your last name wrong. That's my concern, because I don't want to disrespect you. It's Pastor Ramiro, is it Pena or Pena? Pena. There you go. I've been agonizing over that for the last 30 minutes, saying I don't want to, to, okay. to mispronounce your name. Welcome, Pastor, to be with us today. And uh, you were brought to my attention by a dear friend of ours, uh, Mondo, from the PTL Network. And he said, you've got to get this man on your program. And we are so deeply honored to have you. For those that are watching, he currently serves on the Faith Initiative for President Donald Trump. And he also served... Um, when, for the Hispanic Advisory Council when President Trump was the candidate um, for the presidency. Uh, CK, CKCW has a television ministry in both English and Spanish that reaches all 50 states and 249 countries. Wow. And Pastor Rubina has planted 14 other churches in Texas, Mexico, Cuba, and India since 1991. That's the kind of stuff that makes a man a hero in my life. And I am so thrilled. He's the senior pastor and founder of Christ the King Church in Waco, Texas. Um, pastor Pena, I am so glad you are here today. How are you doing? 
doing so well. It's a privilege to be with you and your audience. God bless you, uh, Brother Philip. Thanks for having me today. It's fabulous to have you. You sent me this booklet. I want to tell you something. You've caused trouble in my brain and inspired me <laughs> because I, I am in my life, my just my natural instinct as a father and as a grandfather. I've got four kids of my own. I adopted one of my sons from an orphanage in Romania. And he literally was... Uh, the, the woman that was having him, his birth mother, um, arranged for an abortion and she got a gold bracelet, gave it to her boyfriend to pay for the abortion. And when, and when the, he, he got the gold bracelet, he cashed in the bracelet and went on a vacation. And she, never, she couldn't abort the baby she could because she didn't have the money. And that's how we got him. So our son, Andrew, that's so much part of our ministry, was almost a victim of abortion. And so just naturally, wow. it has been part of my life um, before then and especially since then. But you, began, you, you sent me this booklet and it absolutely blew me away as to how it, the whole abortion story began in America. Because I just, I just don't see America as evil a country as would kill over 60 million babies. And I just don't know how on earth we got ourselves to this point. And um, so just, just as you feel today, I, I love you to share with my audience and let them know how we began this horrendous scourge in our country and um, how we developed into what it is today. Sure. Th thank you again for the opportunity to share. Oh, um, the, the reality is that the abortion industry has what we refer to as an abortion king. That is a, a medical doctor, uh, an OB-GYN, who uh, really led the way and began to train doctors that work for Planned Parenthood uh, to show them how profitable abortions could be. Uh, he himself performed thousands of abortions, including two of his own children. He trained tens of thousands more uh, for doctors doing it that he trained. And he is uh, one of the co-founders of NARAL in this country, N-A-R-A-L, NARAL, which uh, stands for the National Association for the Repeal of Abortion Laws. And they went to every legislative body they could find across the country to repeal any restriction, any law, at all that restricted abortions and they they fought against this and he is really the precursor and the forerunner of the roe v way decision and um the good news is that he became a christian uh he uh his eyes were opened with the advent of ultrasound and once he saw the uh perfectly formed human person in the womb and how the baby would struggle against a needle being inserted or the uh, writhing in pain the baby would go through as it's dismembered, tortured, and murdered. He came under deep conviction and became disillusioned and uh, went to deep depression. And an, a pro-life activist priest Catholic priest led him to faith in Christ and he began his journey back to finding God and even helped uh, produce in this country what was referred to in the early 90s as the silent scream I remember it actually clearly. showed yes yeah, so he was uh, a helper with that and uh, you know I, I spoke to a group of about 2,500 uh, just a couple of weeks ago um, on the uh, um, a different subject, but I brought up this booklet as we're just trying to get it in the hands of everyone across America. Just yeah. by faith, uh, I've, I've, I'm have i not the author, uh, but I partner with the little ministry that, that did this, Hosea Initiative, and we uh, have become um, the, the distributor for this book because through our platforms, trying to get it out. Yeah. Uh, so uh, ha having done so, when I spoke to this group of about 2,500, I mentioned, how many of you ever heard the name Dr. Bernard Nathanson? Out of about 2,500, only three or four raised their hand. I never, I didn't know. And it. that's by design. 
Yeah, and that's and, and you're pro life and you're active and Absolutely. and the, the history here has just uh, been buried by the media. They don't want yeah. this history out. That when the truth came to an individual that was uh, the prime mover, if you will, yeah. uh, he completely did a 180 and changed his um, viewpoint completely and began to champion life. Uh, and then he uh, set out to expose all the outright, outright and direct lies that they told. And this little booklet outlines those lies in, in, in brief. There's a larger book produced by Jose Initiative on an interview with him. And he was interviewed by Terry Beatley just before he passed. And he begged her in his last dying wish, please get the truth out. Uh, wow. And so uh, then we come along and I discover it. And like you, I had a similar reaction. I was completely undone yeah. and could not sit by uh, the sidelines without doing my very best to get this out. So we have bought large, large quantities of, of this, continue to buy quantities to distribute them because I think once the American people have the truth, they'll act accordingly. And I'm, I'm glad to discuss the, the booklet if you'd like. Well, what, what I, when I began to read it, um, I, I'd never heard of this man, never didn't know he existed. I knew of Sanger, who was the founder of Planned Parenthood. And I knew of her reason why she began Planned Parenthood was to kill black babies because she thought the black um, race was um, you know, less than the white race. I knew that. But I had no idea that this man here um, was, the, was the political genius behind this thing. And, and uh, some of the things that blew my mind was, and, and it, if, you, if you love life, if you are pro-abortion, you need to get this booklet and we'll be giving you information during the program as to how to get in contact with Pastor Pena and, and, and get this information into your hand because when you hold this like I did, it, 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 my eye, I, I, was, I was going, oh my goodness. He came out with the points, he, how he changed the entire discussion in America, how he reformed the argument. When I first heard of abortion, you were pro-abortion. You were pro-life or you were pro-abortion. And that was, that was the general term used, you're pro-abortion. And then suddenly, I didn't realize where it came from, but they didn't call it pro-abortion anymore. They called it choice. They took abortion out of the, out of the equation. They called it choice. And so this, these are some of the points that how they changed and this is scary. These guys changed the entire mindset of America through lies and deceit. And exactly the same thing has happened most recently with the homosexual agenda. I never saw, I never thought in my life from Hillary Clinton speaking about being pro-life, uh, pro-marriage between a man and a woman, Obama was the same way. I mean, by the, by the end of his presidency, Gay marriage was acceptable. Anyone that spoke about it was absolutely just slaughtered by everybody else saying, well, you, you know, you're a bigot, you, you know, you're a homophobe. And they, they, I, looking at this, I saw the same pattern. They used what this man did for abortion. They have used and are now using again for socialism. It's the same pattern. That, and that's what was so important to me, Pastor, when I read this, I recognized in these steps that he took to, to, to force abortion upon us, it's exactly the same tactic was used f for the gay agenda, for, for the, it was the sanctity of marriage, and now the socialist agenda is going through exactly the same process, and each one have had success because Americans and the church in America is sound asleep, and that is the bottom line. And do you see the parallels, as I saw, um, on these points that you that this, this the booklet tells us that they're using this again and again to, to, to frame an argument that is that is is just false. To be quite frank with you, no, that's exactly what they've done. I mean, the yeah. devil uses the same playbook, no yes. matter what the, the the lies are. He uses the same playbook, 
And so as they began to reframe the argument and say, this is not about, they would never come out and say, this is about killing babies. Mm -hmm. They would say, uh, no, this is about choice. In America, where we have this uh, rugged individualism, yes, uh, you know, anybody hindering my freedom of choice, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, a hamburger or a cheeseburger, you know, uh, uh, sure fish or, or steak or salad or soup or what whatever it is i want to have the yeah. freedom to choose yeah you know and and especially in texas where i'm from don't mess with texas you know we're, the rugged individual individualism uh, across yeah. america was appealed to yeah and of course oh. nobody wants to take away your choice and and they further began to frame it as women's health care that's right. uh, which, uh, you know, uh, for example, if you take specifically partial birth abortion, that is not a procedure taught in any medical school anywhere. Really? It's not a medical procedure that's taught in a medical school. It is not. OK. And so there, there's just simply uh, no um, uh, reason for performing such a gruesome and murderous act. Yeah. And uh, I mean, e even uh, even in the country of Spain, that is very secular, uh, no abortion is allowed after 20 weeks to gestation because it is considered absolutely barbaric. Yes. OK, that's not a Christian informed position. That is a uh, secular informed position. And it's mm -hmm. simply considered barbaric. Yet in this country, there are supposed Christians, people who call themselves Christians uh, or practicing Catholics uh, or people of faith, yeah. uh, they'll use all those uh, terms of themselves and yet uh, defend to the hilt this barbaric, murderous act of partial birth abortion. Uh, and it's just it just simply defies logic and, and basic human reason to refer to that as as women's health care. Yeah. Uh, so. Framing the argument uh, differently is one of the strategies, and, and it's, I think, the key one. Uh, yeah. An interesting statistic referring to the African-American community, uh, African-American women um, compose about 3 to 4% of the population, that is, of childbearing age. Yeah. So African-American women represent only about 3 to 4% of um, the population that are able to have children, yet they provide uh, are uh, abused taken advantage of and represent 35 percent of all abortions oh my God. so how does that happen apart from specific specific targeting yes by the abortion industry principally Planned Parenthood where they go into the neighborhoods and make the clinics right there in walking distance and uh, practice eugenics and 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 target uh, minority communities, including Hispanic uh, communities as well, and they advertise in Spanish as well. So uh, it, it, there's just no way to defy the data that these communities are, in fact, yes. targeted you by the abortion it, industry. You called it the abortion industry. And what people yes. need to understand that this is, this isn't a health service. This is an industry. This thing is driven by dollars. It is being funded by the taxpayer and to, to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And this president um, has been trying to stop that thing. Uh, and all these budgets that they're trying to pass right now always has money for Planned Parenthood. And um, did you see the video of them, them selling baby parts, the, un, you know, the, 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 the aborted baby for the tissues and the brain so, is worth so much and the heart is worth so much? I mean, these guys, this isn't a... A, a rescue to help girls. This is a an industry to have political and financial power. That's absolutely the case. And uh, to describe it in any other way is just wrong. They are driven by money. Yes. This is an extremely profitable industry. And as uh, they have been quoted as saying uh, by people that have been on the inside and have come out and have told us that tax exempt status is just that it's just a status with the irs mm -hmm. okay 
there are nonprofit uh, educational institutions course, yeah. uh, that have uh, annual budgets in the hundreds of millions of dollars, yes. but they have a tax status that is nonprofit. Okay, so that's just a tax status. It's an extremely profitable mm -hmm. industry. And, and they have uh, big friends in Hollywood and in government that support that industry because they turn around and in kind support their campaigns or their other uh, efforts. Yes. So we need to call it what it is. Uh, it's, it's a business, it's, it's a, big business, yeah. yep. and it's a powerful industry. Yep. Let me go through these points uh, that I think folk, you, you need to get this booklet. I, I really, we'll be giving you an address in a few moments. We, you need to get this booklet from Dr. Pena. Listen, listen to these points. Frame the argument, and they call it a choice and a decision rather than calling it abortion. Point number two, craft slogans. My body, my choice. Have you seen these slogans? This is exactly what they used to frame this, this argument of killing American babies. Killing American. I, I can't... Yesterday... Um, uh, Pastor, we had we do we do missionary work in a country called Moldova, and we rescue girls that are about to be trafficked. And we we have homes in Moldova, and we keep them and we put them back to school and university. And these kids grow up to be leaders. And one of the young ladies that we rescued, one of the first girls, her name is Arena, and um, we took her to America, and she went to Auburn University, graduate with honors, and she married a beautiful young man, a lieutenant in the Air Force. And they came to be with us yesterday, and they have one little beautiful baby called Callum. And uh, she gave us a whole bunch of pictures. And she says, she, she calls me dad and, and my wife Chrissy mom. So she gave me this stack of 15 pictures or, or thereabouts, and I'm looking through them. And like a, a typical guy, I totally missed the message that was in the picture. So Chrissy saw them, and um, there was one picture of Callum, the wee baby, with a book. And on it, it talked about waiting for a new baby. And Chrissy said, you're having a new baby. So she's six weeks pregnant. She came up from the, the Gulf to be with us and to share this news with us. And I mean, the delight and the pleasure and the joy that we took from this girl, that's not of my blood, that we rescued her from being trafficked as a young girl, to watch this. And I said to her, I said, can you imagine someone like you going and having that baby destroyed. And she looked at me and, and her eyes filled up because the, the, the hormonal response in her body is starting to kick in. She's feeling kind of squeamish in the mornings and stuff. And yesterday it dawned on us again, the, the, the fragility of life and the value of human life. And these guys in their slogans, their body, their choice, the, your body, <laughs> When you were having sex, to get pregnant was your body, your choice. That's that's when your body, your choice is. Not when you're killing right. another human being as a, as a form of birth control. Listen to this. Manipulate and use the media. Orwell, this is one of the quotes from um, Dr. Nathanson. He said this, Orwell once remarked that to understand the revolution, one must first join it. But in joining it, one inevitably becomes a propagandist for it. And he discovered, because of his great medical background, that whatever he told the media, and because it was for destruction, they took everything he said as gospel and regurgitated what he had told them, and the media became complicit in this murderous rampage. I keep saying this, um, Pastor Pena, that, when, uh, that Hitler killed six million Jews, and he, he has been described as an animal and a beast and the worst man that's ever lived, although Stalin and others killed more than he did, but because he killed six million Jews. And America has killed over 60 million of our babies, American babies. That if I were to take one of those precious souls into your house and say, look, could you care for this child? Most, most families would say, bring him to us. We, we bring, get, we'll, we'll take care of her. And we have slaughtered. Yes. There's, there's about 65 million people in England, Dr. Pena, uh, Pastor Pena, 65 million. In, so it's like killing all of England. That's what America's done. 
And right. it's, it's a, it, you know, we, we talk about slavery being uh, the national sin. I believe that abortion is, is even greater because we've killed more babies than slaves were killed. It's unbelievable. Um, fabricate, point four, fabricate facts and tell lies. Listen to this. Listen to the size of the lies these, these folks told. It says he reported that one million women had illegal abortions every year and five to 10,000 had died with so-called back alley abortions. And that was, that was six, uh, 4,000 percent more than actually happened. He told a lie to the media, they accepted it as fact and, and, and spewed that upon the American public. We believed it, the politicians believed it. And then the, the, point number five, quote false polling statistics. They told us that 60 percent of America supported abortion. Only one tenth of one percent of all Americans in the late 60s and early 70s wanted abortion on demand legalized. The polling numbers were exaggerated 600 percent. And no one, no one contradicted this. They accepted it as gospel and they took it as the point to kill American babies. Over 60 million of them. And if this doesn't stir the church, if this doesn't stir the humanity in your soul to say, my God, we've got to stop this. And there are two clear choices in this coming election, not the personalities of Biden or, or President Trump. What I'm talking about is Christian faith values, what you believe in your soul and you know in your soul that killing an innocent baby while it's swaddled in the womb of his mother is an absolute atrocity and a heinous crime. And unless the church become the conscious and the voice of America again, we are going to blow America's future in the, in the next three weeks. Let me finish. I'm almost done. Number four, justify decriminalizing abortion. And um, as they said that it, it, abortion would increase greatly. The truth is, as soon as the abortion was, uh, as abortion was, uh, was legal in 1973, demand for the procedure shot up from 98,000 to 1 million abortions a year. Just by accepting it, less than 100,000 to a million in one year. And that right. began the slaughter of the innocents. One more point, and this one blew me away. And I've been wondering, I've, have you ever asked yourself, how come Joe Biden can be Catholic and pro-life? Have you ever asked yourself how they can, be, they can accept the, 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 the termination of a life of a baby up to the point it's born and beyond? And they do. That's in the, that's in the platform of the Democratic Party. And they're Catholics. And what they did, the narrow leaders believed if they could convince enough Catholics that they could remain personally, listen to this insanity, that they could remain personally pro-life, but still vote for pro-abortion candidates. And I've heard what, what, what made this resonate in, inside me so, so greatly. I've heard them all say this. Oh, personally, I'm against abortion. However, it's a woman's choice. They've lied to you. They've misrepresented every issue around abortion. Every issue. They've lied to you. The press has lied to you. This doctor who find, found Jesus at the end of his life when he saw an ultrasound found the, the gospel. But unfortunately, the ripples effect of what he did is still killing American babies every day. And um, I just, I honor you, Dr. Pena, for, for being a voice for this. And uh, how, how can folk get in contact with you to get this booklet? I, I love to get this booklet in as many people's hands as possible. Could you tell us how to do that? Sure, it's, it's very easy. And if they see my name on the screen, it's just RamiroPena.org. 
RamiroPena.org. They can put it up uh, on the screen pretty That's easily. Awesome. And and at the top of when you go there to RamiroPena.org, there's a little tab at the top that says merchandise that takes us to your to your store, to our store rather. Yes. And then you can order it right there. You can order just one copy. Uh, to, it, it's it's inefficient to do it, you know, as as we get it because that's the most expensive way to get just one sure. copy out, uh, five dollars yeah. and ten cents. But if you'll order a bundle of twenty, uh, uh, we'll I'll pay the the shipping and Brilliant. it'll uh, be out for two dollars each. So sixty dollars, you can get a bundle of twenty. Or if you want to oh. get some for your church, uh, that's... it'll come down to just uh, a little over two dollars. Uh, well, it's three dollars at a bundle of twenty to two dollars for a case. Every uh, Christian, is, uh, uh, every Christian needs to go to that website and buy a bundle of these books and give them to your pastor or pass them out to your friends. And as this pricked my conscience, for all I've talked about, talked about abortion, I didn't know the history of it. I didn't know the king of abortion. And it abs- when, I, when I read this, I, I'm going to tell you, you set, you set my hair on fire, Dr. Pena. And, and I, I, I'm just, I hope that everyone will, will tell you one more time before the program is finished. You also, you, you, explain to me, you are a counselor to the president, have been since he began this journey. How on earth did you meet President Trump? Well, uh, some of your audience may be familiar with uh, a wonderful uh, man of God named uh, Dr. Lance Wallnow. Of course, yes. And he and I became uh, very dear friends. And uh, it was the occasion of a meeting of leaders where we were just uh, gathered around the table. And Lance began to prophesy over me. And at the time, uh, all 17 Republican candidates were debating in the primaries of 2016. And he looked up at me and he said, um, the Lord says Donald Trump will win the nomination and you will become a spiritual advisor to him. Uh, you will influence him greatly. And I was shocked. Uh, I, I do have a ministry worldwide. I've, I've prayed a great deal with uh, heads of state and, and leaders or around the world. The Lord's opened these doors for us to, to do so. So th- to do that is not a, uh, a big leap. It was a big leap for me that Donald Trump would win and that I'd be connected to him. Uh, because just in the natural, as I was looking at it at the time, uh, there was nothing in the natural that it would make me be drawn to him. Yeah. But sure enough, I prayed through it and I felt like that was a prophetic word of the Lord. And um, within two weeks, I was invited to come and meet him at, at Trump Tower in his boardroom in, in New York. Uh, I, I was unable uh, to make that work and other invitations came. He ultimately did win the nomination. Um, I attended a large gathering of faith leaders in New York. Uh, and in July of 2016, I was invited with about a dozen other um, national, to describe, use their language, uh, national Hispanic leaders to uh, meet with him. And so I did. And in July of 2016, uh, just before meeting with him, I endorsed him because he had the nomination. And I knew that the uh, alternative was just not an option. (laughs) And so here I find myself meeting with him personally sitting across the table uh, as a pastor in the room. The others are mostly business leaders uh, and attorneys, about a dozen Hispanic national voices. And I was asked to pray, to open the meeting. And so I did. And I prayed like I was in church. I just prayed the fire (laughs) of God's presence to be there in the room and welcome the Holy Spirit into the room with power and authority and to bless him and his family. And anyway, I, I, I prayed. And as soon as I was done, He looked up, pointed at me and said, that was really good. Who are you? (laughs) And, uh, you know, he's very direct. And so uh, I I told him I was just a pastor from Waco, Texas, and and that I just endorsed him on national television. And he said, you did. He said, Pastor, aren't you afraid of the IRS? I said, no, sir. I'm an American citizen. And as such, I have free speech. Just because I'm a pastor does not mean I don't have 
my First it. Amendment right to free preach speech. It. Preach it. So I, I, he was stunned, and he said, what about the Johnson Amendment? And I began to talk about that with him, and he was just getting familiar with that, and other faith leaders had begun, begun to speak to him. Mm -hmm. And so that began a personal relationship, and and I've been with him and prayed with him many, many times uh, in, in, in the White House, even in the residence, uh, on the grounds, at specific events, around the country, uh, on the border in South Texas, uh, 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 discussing the immigration issue, mm -hmm. and I speak a lot about human trafficking and immigration. Wow. And uh, I just want to tell you that personally, he is very, very warm. He's a, a great listener. He takes careful notes. He takes real, he asks really great questions. Uh, he's not afraid of diversity of thought at all. And he's drawn to strong people and he wants strong people around him. So he is not always the bombastic persona that's on the yeah. campaign trail. I've heard that uh, times. Interpersonally with him, uh, he he's a wonderful gentleman and uh, has become a dear, dear friend, and I love him dearly. And nice. so I just want to also say, no matter what image people have of Donald Trump, our president, today what's before us is two different worldviews to support, yes. not personalities. Uh, and the other side wants to frame him uh, as a, a personality that uh, people may or may not like. But I, I'm here to tell you very directly that when I'm voting, <clears throat> I'm voting for the support of Israel. Yes, sir. I'm voting pro-life. Absolutely. I'm bro voting for the defense of religious liberty. Yes, sir. Which is our first liberty that, that must be protected times. I'm voting for the right kinds of judges to be put on the federal bench and the Supreme Court for a lifetime. Federal judges uh, re received lifetime appointments, and he's done a fantastic job uh, in, in that work. He has great advisors that he's listening to. And so it's the issues and the things that he's done. For example, when I speak to uh, in, in the minority community, uh, I look at uh, uh, prison reform, what he's done to reduce uh, the outrageous, whimsical punishments that have been meted out inconsistently across the country for nonviolent crimes. Yeah. Uh, people are getting life sentences for um, uh, drug crimes that yeah. uh, are not um, uh, uh, what, what you would think someone would get life uh, in prison for. So he's brun has brought meaningful reform that's appropriate uh, to uh, the, the prison system. So I'm very, very grateful for his leadership uh, in so all of these areas. And the things that he's got done is what we should be looking at. And mm -hmm. I think uh, going forward, the things that I think he will continue to do uh, to defend and protect the church, uh, calling the church an essential service yes. uh, when others wouldn't. Uh, so mm -hmm. we can support the philosophy of what I call the mob, defunding the police um abortion tearing or down we can support tearing down lincoln's statue yesterday yeah, un, un, <laughs> the, the immense, uh, black anarchy. lives matters black lives matters tears down a statue of the emancipator abraham lincoln and destroy right. a statue and i'm thinking the, the press the press are criminals i'm telling you now the press are criminals in, in this in this battle for the soul of America, and uh, you are you yeah. are so right. You are so right. The press has no problem telling lies, repeating lies, and they're no. basically in the hip pocket of the opposite worldview Absolutely. that us as Christians support. And yes. so when I'm again I, when I'm voting, I'm voting pro-Israel, pro-life, pro-religious uh, liberty, pro-good <laughs> judges on the bench. And for me, it's just not that hard of a decision. What's, what's, why I'm smiling is yesterday I was on the program and the list that you've just stated and we didn't talk about this is exactly in the same order as I spoke about yesterday. And I, and I said the reason why I'm voting for President Trump is life, Israel, the, the freedom of Christian faith in this country. I've been in America since 1969. I came here from, from Scotland in 1969. And I've never seen a president, never seen a president 
from Nixon till now that has loved America and that has fulfilled his promises. What gets me in, when folk don't have a memory over, Pastor, is the fact that the people, Obama did not fulfill his promises. These guys, Bush didn't fulfill his promises. And Trump has systematically gone through the things that he told the American public and has fulfilled. I've got a friend who's a pilot in South Alabama. His name is George Wallace, a great friend, a great man of God, a, a great friend. And he just did not like Trump in any shape or form. And he was a cruise supporter. And of course, I was very vocal for Trump. And we had many a banter on Facebook over, over his choice. And I bet him, I says, I'm telling you now that Trump is going to become the next president. What, I said this when he came down the escalator. And uh, George said to me, oh, God forbid that that would ever happen. And I said, you watch and see. So when, when Trump put out, when the president put out the list of his judges that he would put to the Supreme Court, uh, George said to me, he said, I don't believe he'll do that. I said, you watch and see. And I got a stake out of it. I've never collected yet, but I'm believing God that it happens before. So, but you're right. And, and I urge 60%, listen to this statistic, 60% of evangelicals did not vote in 2016. 60%. And if that 60% would get off their behinds and go to the polls and vote, not personality, but the principles of the Word of God, I believe that we could shake this country and have a political revolution that would give the Senate and the House to conservative thinkers and, 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 and change structures in America. And only the church can do that. Only the church has that power. But 30 million Christians... And I just, I know that you will urge people watching today to go and vote. Talk to your neighbors. If they don't have a ride, take them with you. Be active in this event. I support, I send money. In fact, I was joking the other day. I, I said to my sons, I've just sent a billionaire a hundred bucks. <laughs> because I believe that yeah. much in, in what's happening. One of the things I want to talk to you about as well, that, that you, you're a, I'd love to spend a lot of time with you. You are such a fascinating person. You are, you take tours to Israel. Could you explain what that's about? Because I know there are folk that are looking to go back to Israel or, or go to Israel for the first time, and they can go with you, which I believe will be a tremendous uh, event. Tell us about it. Well, thank you, uh, Brother Philip. We, we um, really believe that when people get to the Holy Land, they yes. have an encounter with Almighty God uh, because uh, God has a plan and a destiny over the land yeah. and to make the bible stories come alive there's just nothing better than seeing masada seeing the dead sea Absolutely. going to the river jordan and being baptized in the in the jordan river yeah. uh worshiping on the sea of galilee going to the garden tomb yeah. visiting the mount of olives where uh the prophet said clearly the messiah will will touch down again and yeah. and and you know the angels told the disciples you know, he's going to come back in, in just the same way. And they were on the Mount of Olives. And and so there's something about the land that God has chosen where that is the birthplace of our faith. And I think if you have it, you we have a yes. very quick, very short uh, video. If you can show sure. it, that would be great. Let's watch this. Ramiro Opinion Ministries invites you to an unforgettable journey to come and visit one of the most significant places throughout all of history and in all the world. We invite you to join us this year as we tour Israel, the birthplace of our faith. So come see where the Creator encountered His creation. Experience where faith was formed, history established, and supernatural released. We invite you to come with us and visit the land where Jesus walked, where He demonstrated to us how to live supernaturally, where he healed, forgave, and set prisoners free. See where Jesus showed us true unconditional love as he defeated death once and for all on the cross. So have you always wanted to walk where Jesus walked and visit the actual place where he visited? Well, friends, make this your year. Join us for the Ramiro Pena Ministries Holy Land Tour. Come receive powerful teaching from Pastor Pena as he brings the biblical stories to life. We'll visit the Mount of Olives where Jesus ascended up into heaven. Visit the Garden of Gethsemane and pray in the place Jesus prayed on the night of his betrayal. 
We'll celebrate the resurrection in a special communion time at the Garden Tomb, where Christ ultimately overcame death for us all. So sign up today for this amazing trip as we tour the city of Jerusalem, explore the tunnels behind the Western Wall. Join us as we float in the Dead Sea, experience breathtaking views as we ascend by cable car up the majestic Masada, see Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, visit the ruins of Capernaum, travel in boat to the Sea of Galilee, see the beautiful Aquades Accessoria, and just like Jesus, be baptized in the Jordan River. So this is your year. Experience all that God has for you on this year's RPM Holy Land Tour. Visit RomeroPinion.org for payment details and to sign up. <laughs> oh my goodness. At the beginning of this year, we were in Moldova and uh, we, we took some of our young folk to Israel. And it was absolutely mind-blowing to watch these kids that have spent their lives in orphanages and suddenly walk where Jesus walked. And I had an, an amazing encounter at the, Garden of, at, at the Garden of Gethsemane. You know the beautiful church that's there and the, and the, and the stone where Jesus uh, prayed. And I've been, there, I've been there a number of times. And every time I've been there, my younger, my younger self, I looked and thought, what a waste, you know, all this building these buildings over the rock and stuff. So we sat down on the bench beside the rock where, where people were coming in and praying. And as I'm sitting there, this Chinese woman came in and she knelt down beside the rock and began to weep. And tears, she couldn't wipe the tears away from her face quick enough. They were just pouring down her face. And as, as I looked at her, I understood the value of the, 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 the church around and covering the rock. The Garden of Gethsemane was purchased by Croatian men hundreds of years ago as a, as a, to keep it safe from development and, and from time. And suddenly that, that church over that rock became a blessing and I began to weep. And I, I literally fell down on my knees before the rock and put my hands through the... the, 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 the iron um, fence and touched the rock and I thought my goodness this this is sacred this is really sacred and we took the kids to Masada and with all, all all the things you just described Capernaum and stuff if you've never been to Israel you owe it to yourself to go and if you're watching just now and you with grandkids let me tell you what I want to do here's my dream I want to take every one of my grandkids all at once or one at a time as they get older and let them walk where Jesus walked because I believe that that will cement Amen. in their little hearts the reality of the cross, the garden tomb. Oh my goodness. If you've never experienced it, I, I, I mean this sincerely. Go with someone that knows what's happening. You can go there. I've been there by myself and, and you know, you look at a bunch of old stuff and you don't really get it. But when you go with someone that's teaching from the scripture what happened at that point, it literally explodes inside you. And you can get in contact, um, if, information from this, www.ramiropena.org. And it's on the same website as you can get this booklet that I've been sharing with you today. And I want you to go to Israel. And I promise you, you'll write me or call me or text me and you'll say, Philip, thank God. I listen to you, and I am just uh, man. I'm, do, do you do this often, uh, Pastor? Every year we go. Every oh, year, so crazy. I've got a dear friend, um, Dan Betzer. I don't know if you know him or not, he, and uh, he's, he pastors a great church in Fort Myers, First Assemblies of God, one of the greatest mission churches in America, and he has taken two hundred people to Israel every year for for decades. Beautiful. And uh, when Beautiful. he preaches, when he preaches, you, he talks like Israel's his backyard. It's crazy. And he talks about walking down here and past this here. And you're thinking, oh, I wish I knew as much as this man did. And I know by going with you that they will be blessed by your wisdom and your understanding of what they'll be seeing. Thank you, brother. We, we so appreciate um, 
uh, being able to talk with you today and, and to go over these truths. Yes. And uh, I, I, and again, we're really working hard just to get the truth out. When people see the truth, yes, they respond to the truth. And I, I if anybody would like to help us, we're just trying to get it out there. Uh, support us getting this out. Uh, yes. it, it, it the gospel is free uh, for receiving it. It's a, the the salvation is a free gift. Uh, yeah. That doesn't mean that it didn't cost anything. Uh, it, it, it takes resources to get this out and distributed and, and the staffing and the, the everything it takes to, to just get things in the mail. Absolutely. So your support, brother, and helping us get this message out is so incredibly important for changing lives. We ourselves have a nine-year-old adopted grandson because of a little girl that we'd barely just met. Uh, I stopped her at 530 in the morning in the driveway of Planned Parenthood. Oh and my. she was oh there my. to have an abortion and we took her to our home and we uh ended up bringing her into our home with a newborn she kept the baby and i cannot imagine life without him uh right. today and, and so right. again this is not just theory this is not just some a bunch of oh. statistics that are out there this is real life right. lives were saving and I pray that you join us in the struggle to defend life. The Lord says, choose you this day, life or death, choose Absolutely. life. Yes, sir. So I, I just thank you so much for helping us get this message oh, out it is to your my, audience. God bless you, brother. It is my brother. pleasure. Thank you so much. If you would like to do this again, I'd be thrilled to have you on the program anytime. And anything sure. that's current with the president, anything that you would like to share with our audience, you will have an open invitation to come anytime. Just contact Andrew. And we'll make space for you to come because I value your voice Thank in you, the brother. days we're living Thank in. You. I honor you for being with us. So you need to get in contact with this dear pastor friend of mine, RamiraPena.org. It's up on your screen right now. You can get this book. You need to buy them in bundles. Listen to me. Go and buy a hundred of them today. Go and get a hundred of them. And give them to your friends and say, hey, this might be interesting to you. And I promise... Because it did this to me. This book, I got it, and look, look at the marks. Look, can you see that? Look at the highlighting I did. I'm thinking, I never knew that. I never knew that. Can you look? I, I was, I was, I was marking the book because it was showing me the tactics of the enemy, and you need to understand the tactics of the enemy in your life and in this country. So get this book, and for goodness' sake. You de deserve it. You've been locked up for months because of these people. I'm not going to call them a bad name, but I'm, you know what, what I'm talking about. It's time to go somewhere, and why don't you go to Israel for crying out loud? Just give the devil a black eye and say, I'm going to where Jesus walked. And you can do all of that by contacting um, www.ramiropena.org. And um, they'll be thrilled to get in contact with you and help you whatever you need. Pastor, thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate you, you more than you know, and you're welcome here anytime. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank joy. you for being with us. And that, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that just fabulous? I know, I know that I've learned from this man, and he has honored and blessed me by information, knowledge. Knowledge is power. And we are living in a day, you've got to understand this, to my friends that live in America, those that are watching from Europe, maybe this isn't your battle. But America is a country that's uniquely called by God. This nation has God's hand on it. We are one nation under God. And we, we are living in a day when a, a, a would-be government, now listen to me, a would-be government, 21 days, they could be the government that wants to take God out of this society. And if they get power, that's exactly, you will see things that you could not believe. If, if, if you remember how much America changed during the Obama administration, it was, it was he, he said, I'm going to change America. He sure did. Well, I want to change America back. And how that happens is the church standing up for righteousness and joining, stop all the pettiness, put all of your pettiness to one side and get yourself focused on the harvest and the, and the reward of America being spared. What will we tell our grandkids and our great-grandkids 
if we fail in the next three weeks. It's unbearable to think about. I pray for you that you'll be blessed by God and challenged today. Get this booklet. Get in contact with Pastor Pena and, and, and go to Israel. Take your kids with you. Invest in their life. Don't leave the money that they'll waste. Take them to see where Jesus walked. It'll change their lives forever. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You are part of our family, the Daily Faith family. Please tell someone about it. Sign up for YouTube. They told me if I get a thousand people on YouTube, YouTube's going to pay me money. I can't wait. My Scottish heart is dying with anticipation. We love you. We're going to see you tomorrow. Thank you again for joining with us. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124.